Hello everyone, this is Wyland with the FPV Podcast. Just got done watching DRL Episode 5, which is Mardi Gras Worlds. This is definitely one of those change of pace episodes. Before we get into that, I just wanted to make sure to let everybody know this is just my initial thoughts right after watching the episode, so it's right off the cuff, it's completely unedited. So let's go ahead and get into the episode, and if you haven't watched it, you should definitely watch the episode before listening to this. Generally, when I start going off with these episodes, I usually like to talk about the pilots, because it should be focused in on the pilots. But this episode was so different from the first two episodes that I think it's really worth talking about the track, because that's what really made it different. This is one of the tracks where it's actually a two-lap race, but it's still a minute long. So they like to stick to that one-minute long uh, heat or races, but it takes two laps in order to finish that. That means in a given lap, it takes about 30 seconds, which is completely different. It's also a much tighter course. You know, the, um, the first half of the course is very, very narrow corridors with lots of gates. So every single time there's a turn, there's usually a gate. So this actually really changed how the pilots were flying and also caused a lot more crashing than what we're used to seeing for DRL. You know, the crashing is usually, I don't know, they're usually more more spread out. But this one, it seemed like you were almost anticipating a lot of crashing going on in every heat, which is very unlike the DRL episodes that we've been watching. DRL mentions that this is a less technical track, but... Really, if you see all of the crashing that was going on, I would say this is a more technical track just by the virtue of of all the crashing. I think that really dictates whether or not it is a technical track, is that whether or not the pilots can fly at their full, comfortable, even a little bit risky speed and still end up finishing the race. And when a lot of pilots are crashing out, especially these pilots, which they're, you know, they're the best of the best, or it says to me that this is a very technical track just in a very different way it may not fit their definition but it's still a very technical track in the last two episodes whoever got off to an early start definitely had the advantage because they can choose their own lines in this episode they had the same advantage but the problem is is that they can clearly go too fast and then crash out and this happened in quite a few heats which is something very interesting in that the course is actually so technical that they can easily crash out if they're not careful. And this happened quite a few times in first place, which is something that you're not used to seeing in DRL races, at least not this year. Needless to say, this is my least favorite track of the year. I really don't like tracks that causes pilots to crash out. I want to see competition between pilots. So any track in which they're crashing out because of the track and they're crashing out at the frequency that they did in this particular episode, I'm going to rank those at the bottom of my list in terms of tracks that I like. So let's go ahead and get into the pilots. I think the big story still is Jet because he's the reigning champion for 2016, except this is a positive one. He looked like he got back on track and he was really in the groove for this episode. It looked like he really understood the track. He enjoys flying those tight corridors. He really knows how to fly through gates. He's a very technical person and he just looked really good and smooth out there. Probably right behind him after that would be Gab, of course. You know, he's a two-time winner right now at this point. Clear favorite going in. But Gab, in terms of flying, I think when he gets to technical courses, he likes to be more conservative. He definitely wants to finish. So you see him hang back a little bit more. You just didn't see him get out to those blistering leads and then just go at a blistering pace. It felt like that you know, during times, he kind of hung back, made sure that he was able to get through the track, get the points that he needed in order to move to the next round. Wild Willie, of course, he's always in the mix. He's always competitive. He's one of those type of pilots where if he's still flying, you really can't count him out. And that's what's really fun about him. He's definitely a pilot that can compete. He's able to handle the stress of crashing and still being able to get back up, get into the race and still be able to compete for one of the top three spots. It's always fun watching him race. With Aidnub not being in this particular group, I would say he is the most well-rounded pilot here. In the first episode that he premiered at, McStrawley showed that he can compete with the big dogs. He definitely was able to keep up. He was able to take the lead. Unfortunately, he crashed out in some of the heats and he wasn't making it into the finals. 
In this one, he made it into the finals, and he can show that he's fast. He's able to take those tight corners, and he's able to stay in the air and really finish strong. It's really nice to see international pilots make it into DRL and compete and do well. So this actually makes it a international championship because we have representation from other countries. Nurk is definitely coming into his own. You can definitely see that he's a pilot in which as the race progresses, as he gets more heats in, he actually gets stronger. He gets more confident. He understands what he wants to do and he's able to strategize with his own theories to be able to get to first place or at least get into the top three. So it's really nice to see that, you know, the region over here in the East Coast is well represented. The last person I want to quickly talk about is Flying Bear. Definitely a person that has showed up in this episode, was consistent, finished well, took advantages of, of you know opportunities when it presented to himself. So definitely want to find out more about this pilot. Hopefully I can get him onto the podcast and, you know, just to know a little bit more background on this particular pilot. With all that being said, I'm really looking forward to watching the finals. I want to see how well Jet competes against Gab and Willie. Since Jet was in group two while Willie and Gab was in group one, we both know that they're all fast, but it seemed like Jet was on a different level. So we'll see if that's true or not once we see the finals. You also have a group of great rookies that are coming in that could challenge for podium spots. So it's like veterans versus rookies and you also have the reigning champion maybe getting back into his groove and trying to make sure that you know that that title doesn't uh, get away from him that easily so it'll be very interesting you know we're talking about almost a halfway point in drl right now we'll see how it all works out in the finals but before we wrap this up i think i just want to wrap up with this um thought you know it's just a really quick thought and it's the fact that even with the best pilots in the world you can still design a track in which more often than not there's going to be a lot of crashing just because every pilot out there is going to be pushing himself and if you just design a track in which it's too technical in other words there's just too many things to crash into uh, it's not going to be a good race, and that's what I saw in New Orleans, or in this particular episode. There was just too many heats in which pilots were crashing out, so you didn't actually get to see the competition between pilots. That's not, you know, that's what I came here to see. That's what I want to watch. Um, if the crashing is significant, in other words, you know, if it was a competition between two pilots and then they crashed out, that's different than crashing out because of the course. You know, I just don't want to see the crashing out because they hit something on a course. The course is supposed to be there in the background to help guide the pilots through this track in which they're competing against. I never really want the track to stick out to the point where every heat you expect people to crash out. You know, that's, in my opinion, not fun. But that could be just me. I don't really know because you don't really get a sense for what uh, the general audience wants. But I know in the local heat, so, you know, when an entire group of pilots crash out and there's only one or two pilots in the air, it's a much less interesting race. And the audience kind of, you know, they lose their attention to it. You know, they don't really care to watch that race. And I feel it's the same way probably for DRL, although they can spruce it up still to make it much more watchable because it's such a good spectacle to, to watch like two pilots at the upper end competing against each other. I just feel like, you know, if you have a choice to design a track and if there's ways to make it easier when you see that the pilots are crashing out, you should take it. Anyways, those are my quick thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and uh, continue watching DRL. We're kind of at the halfway point, I guess. And I would say that, you know, at this point, the audience that are watching are the audience that cares to see the racing. Unfortunately, you know, you I don't know. I think at this point it starts getting repetitive. Uh, the pilot or the audience that doesn't w doesn't really care about the racing is probably going to start dropping out because I'm not really seeing like um, a different continuity in which you know we're launching to uh, the next um, the next thing to keep people interested into the racing. It's either you're interested in this format or you're not, you know, there's nothing to, you know, say this is the next level and this is the reason why you want to watch kind of like TV reality shows, which we probably don't need in DRL, but I'm just saying that, um, it would be interesting to see the numbers. 
on whether or not the audience drops off after this point. Because at this point, uh, it starts feeling repetitive to me. And if I like racing and I enjoy watching racing and I feel that repetitiveness, you either have to shift gears or you have to be comfortable with um, the the audience that you have is the audience you're going to keep. Um, this could be just me. I have no numbers to back this up. This is just my quick feel on it. But I feel like at this point, you start losing people in terms of, you know, whether or not they care to continue watching the racing. But anyways, my quick thoughts. I don't know why I added that one in at the end. Uh, hopefully you have a great 4th of July. I'm enjoying the fireworks and I will catch you tomorrow for the finals.